time from you supposed to invest another 20 million pounds in order to restart the business in effect. Um, 1995 it became the largest uh, largest passenger airline in London Dublin Group, which was the biggest international central scheduled group in Europe. Um, this was within 10 years of start and proving that the new formula was a successful one and one for the future. In 1997, the airline went public, being floated on the New York and Dublin stock exchanges, uh, with shares over 20 times those subscribed, and rising from 11 euros to 25 euro 50 within the first day. In 2000, it launched its Europe, the world, Europe's largest booking online booking website, which included links to lower cost, far higher hotel accommodation. <laughs> travel insurance and rail services. Uh, within three months it was taking 50,000 bookings a week and within a year it was three quarters of all bookings were done online. 2003 they purchased Buzz Airlines from KLM, which they re relaunched on 13 former routes, giving them access to 11 French regional airports and making them the biggest airline to carry out the Sunset. Uh, 2006 was the first attempt to take over the rail in a one billion, one billion pound bid launched as a unique opportunity to form an Irish airline, which was rejected as being contradictory. With the second bid going in 2008, at 619 million, but rejected by the Irish government, and from the value of the airline and the harm competition, although they still maintain a stake in Air Lingus and wish to take over in the future. After they closed all checks and debts in October 2009, and have profits have increased ever since, up to a record of 503 million euros in 2011. Uh, and there are hopes to launch the much delayed Ryan Atlantic long haul carrier service, which was approached in 2009, but has been delayed for five years due to a shortage of suitable and cheap aircraft. Uh, moving on to the regulations. Before deregulation, we had a single airline designation with tight capacity agreements on market access, with only 2% of European international routes had more than one airline per, per state. Fixed prices via IATA, which is the International Air Transport Association, were higher, had much higher fares than the worldwide standards. And in 1981, the cost for passenger seats were on to the route 64% higher than in the US. Also, they need uh, the process of deregulation was a three part time set out by the EEC and by the EU. 1979 was the Civil Aviation Memorandum, which was set down to our objectives. Uh, 1990, the second package was liberalised regulation, but the third package was intended to market access to aircraft and certain groups. <coughs> In 1992, the third package finalised all the rules and regulations for the new framework. In April 1997, EU completed the regional integration of common airspace and its member states into a single aviation market. It removed all commercial restrictions for flying, was regulated by national rules within the EU, and created an international competition, creating a level playing field for services like the low cost carriers of Ryanair to compete with the national carriers such as SAS and British Airways. Ryanair the possibility to fly to other European countries, creating a whole new market. 
factors which affect the airline industry um, is terrorism, especially 9-11. Uh, following 9-11, there was an extreme fall in demand for aircraft. And um, this is when Ryanair chose to invest, when there was little investment in the market, they chose to invest, therefore giving them a lot of bargaining power. And this enabled them to uh, score 100 Boeing uh, airplanes at a very cheap price, um, also allowing them to gain economies of scale by having a fleet almost of one airplane. Um, oil prices obviously affect the airline industry. Um, oil prices make up 4% of the total cost of an airline on an annual basis. Um, and this is through uh, the increase in fluctuations is usually passed on to the, uh, the consumer. Um, so therefore, whenever there's a time of higher oil prices, the cheap alternative is always the more um, good looking one. So you choose from right now. Uh, cost of safety, security, environmental issues have risen over the last couple of years. Um, of, uh, I guess you say weather, natural disasters. Um, this uh, makes it a lot more beneficial to cut costs everywhere, which we're going to have to Recession and the credit crunch. Um, this is the consumer preferences in the market is very different. They look for a lot more value of money rather than quality of product. And uh, this is where Ryanair has they've chosen to have a very cheap value, like value for my product rather than having a quality, which is now might be uh, hindering them right now, but we'll see. Um, pollution controls, there's quota set on the amount of pollution you're allowed to um, emit and the fuel consumption. Uh, Ryanair actually puts uh, fuel consumption quotas on the pilots so they don't use too much fuel. Um, and taxation otherwise if this uh, occurs and we pass on as a cost to the organization. Uh, there's obviously competition from other modes of ta transport, especially the high speed trains such as the Eurostar going to France and uh, Belgium and stuff. Uh, and there's been globalization in media, which is a factor. Um, Ryanair doesn't spend like, any money on advertising, and this is mainly due to the, uh, the media and publicity they get, and globalization is. <coughs> Their word spread across the world. And uh, in Ryanair's case, any publicity is good publicity. If they get their name out there, they're happy, whether it's in negative light or good light. Um, future prospects of the company, there's obviously positive um, direction and negative directions that both companies are going in. Um, in Ryanair's terms, um, 
there going plus direction more in the, uh, the customer uh, customer side. They're relaxing charges. Um, they are uh, yeah relaxing on their baggage extra baggage charges. They're increasing the uh, amount of carry on baggage you're allowed to have through adding a second bag. Um, they are no longer um, putting hidden costs in there. They're putting all the costs in the face ticket value price. So uh, in the in the past this has been uh, cause of losses for them, especially in uh, Italy and Spain, they've uh, 